Cutie's Ways. I'm Mr. Patient. And I'm Little Miss Homemaker. I'm Miss Katie. And I'm Little Music Man. <laughs> and wait. Wait. Hey. John. I'm Miss Katie. I'm, I'm Mr. John Patient. Boy. <laughs> I'm Little Miss Homemaker. I'm John Boy. I'm Mr. Patient. <laughs> and Little Miss... Mr. Music Man. <laughs> Little Miss, Mr. Music Man. Little Music Man is outside ex watching a groundhog. He was going to join us, and a groundhog came up, and that was, of course, more exciting. And he said, No, nope, I'm going to stay out here and watch the groundhog. <laughs> so he may join us later for the icing. What? The icing? What are we making today? You have to stay tuned to find out. to y'all with is what and why? My birthday and mom and, and, and Miss Katie's birthday. Do you call me Miss Katie? And you can call me mama. mama. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Alright. Our last cake family in the kitchen event was banana split cake for our birthdays. And there comes little music man. Did you see the groundhog? Okay. We're filming about a cake. Do you want to join us? Okay, maybe for the icing. And so this time we are going to make a cake for Dad's birthday, Mr. Patient's birthday. It was actually the other day, but we are just now making the cake. The cake comes from, from page 114 of um, my cookbook. Here it is, from Katie's Kitchen, Volume 1. So, thank you. So, we're going to go through this cake. If you'd like a copy of the recipe, it's in the cookbook. And you can find a link down below to purchase the cookbook. And if you purchase more than two, and or more than one, it, it, there's a discount. Okay, um, so we're going to jump right in and tell you, I don't think we said what kind. What kind's your favorite cake? Red velvet cake with cream cheese icing. Homemade. Homemade cream cheese homemade. icing. Homemade red velvet cake. All right. Red velvet cake and homemade cream cheese icing. We don't claim this is a health food, and I'm going to go ahead and say it now. I won't say it later. It's healthy for me. I, d <laughs> I don't use red food coloring. I don't purchase it. I don't keep it. I used to keep it in my pantry at the farmhouse that we moved from, but it is not healthy. We don't drink drinks with it. We don't eat potato chips or things snacks with it but for this recipe you know this is the classic recipe red velvet cake now one of these days i'm going to make one um i'm going to experiment with beet juice for a healthier option but this is what we're doing today everything in moderation and this definitely we use in moderation because i think i only use um one bottle twice a year and the other is our red velvet fudge. And there's a re mini recipe a video up here for that. <clears throat> now, a couple of years ago, I made a video uh, how to grease and flour pans. Uh, that video is up here as well. Let me show John Boy and you guys, if you don't mind, uh, or if you don't know how. Now, I use Crisco. Again, this is the only thing I use Crisco for. I used to make it, use it for biscuits and all those things. It's a quintessential southern um, pantry staple, but it is hydro um, hydrogenized and all the bad things for you. So if you use this in moderation in your house, or if you just use it every day, that is your choice. But this is what I use it for. I use it simply and only to grease and flour pans because I haven't found anything else that works. I've tried coconut oil. I've tried a, um, a more natural version of this. Do you know this was first invented for uh, to make candles and soap? That's what it was used for. Oh. So oh, hey, anyway, let's eat it. well, so but this is the <laughs> the best way to grease and flour. And I used to use a paper towel, but now I use one of these plastic gloves. And I only have one, or I'd let you share in this. But um, you know, I grew up using a paper towel and just a very thin layer. And, but you want to make sure you, I'm getting my fingers in there, not missing the 
the uh, sides or cracks uh, or whatever. Sure. You got to make sure you get the corners. Corner. Well, is there the a corners. corner in a round pan? That's what I don't know. Uh, yeah, where the side the meets corner. the bottom. Where the side meets the bottom. And see, I, I got just enough on my hand. I don't have any extra in there. Plus, the heat of my hand helped that to melt. And I just pull that off and you would throw that away. There. There's that. And this can be a fun part if you want it to. So, you just dump that in there. A little bit of flour. Whatever, a little bit of flour. Whatever kind. And then you just shake it around. I'm just showing John Boy. So, y'all have seen this before. So you just shake it around, and you're just rolling it around to coat. But you don't want a lot of extra um, flour. Now here's what I do. You just dump it on there. Kind of set it on there. Hang it. And then this, this is ready to go. Actually, I don't have enough on the edges here. So you just coat this. You can do it over this pan. Kind of like this. See how that coats it better. Okay, now we've got... See, it's completely coated. You don't want to skip this step because your cake will stick. Don't want that. No, you will have a mess <clears throat> if you have that. Now, so what? I don't mean to do this to the back of y'all. Here you go. And then I've heard of people using cocoa powder for this. If your cake is already chocolate, I, I mean, I, I've never have, but I don't see why you couldn't. You're just needing a powder. Right, you're just needing a powder. Right. So, Mr. Patient, if you'll take this over there to the trash can and then just bang that little dab on the edge. He's just going to bang it on the trash can, get that little dab out, and the pans are greased and floured. That's what it calls. So, if you see a recipe that says grease and flour the pans, you can't spray it and then flour it because that won't work. You have to have that solid shortening. John Boy and I are going to show you how to make the batter for the red velvet cake. Okay, first we are going to cream the butter and sugar together. So can you please hand me the spatula and we have two sticks of butter. Do you remember how much that measures out to or do you know? Um, 16 ounces. Wow. Okay, better than I thought. He's right. So, <clears throat> do you know how many cups or parts of cups or whatever? Two? It's one cup. One cup of butter. So, I'm going to stand here and mix it. Can you slowly pour in the sugar? We're going to, this is called creaming the butter and sugar. So, we're doing it until it's creamy. Hold on. Okay, go ahead just slowly. Turn it this way so they can see it. The butter is very softened. Gonna just keep creaming this, blending this until it's creamy and fluffy. And um, it's one and a half cups of sugar and one cup of butter. Do you want to do it? Yes. Okay. Uh, we've added two eggs to this and he's mixed that. Now we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. I make my own vanilla. This particular vanilla is made out of vodka. Um, the, va the vanilla we used in the banana split cake was made out of rum because I wanted that more uh, fruity flavor in that particular recipe. So this is just, um, it imparts a neutral, uh, ju you just taste the vanilla. So that's why I like to use the vodka, good quality vodka for just a neutral vanilla. So we've got one teaspoon of homemade. You can just put that in there. And then <clears throat> we have, my mother used two of these little bottles. And this is her recipe. But I only use one, I think that's enough, of the red food coloring. So what I'm, I'm going to pour it in there. And I want you, don't turn the motor on, but just kind of mix it with, without the motor because if you if you don't i'm afraid it's going to splash red everywhere can i scrape the sides yeah go ahead and scrape the sides first that's fine and then we're just kind of slowly incorporate it is what you want to do so i want to tell you this is the time at which you can stop a minute my mother uh added the cocoa the two teaspoons teaspoons of cocoa to at this stage but i'm actually going to put it in my flour and I'm just going to get a whisk. 
and mix it in with my flour and it'll be incorporated. I just think that works a little better. So that is a little deviation from what the cookbook says to do. All right, can you slowly keep that down and mix that up? So I've got two and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour that I'm going to slowly add in here and if you can mix this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly add the flour mixture alternately with the one cup of buttermilk. Okay, can we do this together? This is your first time to do this, but I'm going to slowly add a little bit of one and then another and one and another. Now in our other home, our farmhouse, we used a stand mixer for this, but you can use a hand mixer. I'll keep it on low. Keep it on low. Here we go. Low, here we go. Right? Right. All right. Now, this is the part that I think a boy would like. And you don't know what we're about to do. But we're about to add a little combination that would cause it to rise even further than it would ordinarily. I have, John Boy apple cider vinegar and baking soda and baking soda uh, now by the way for this I use a teaspoon of each and I use apple cider vinegar because I don't have any other vinegar on board this is all we use for every vinegar need and I've got a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and I'm going to put a teaspoon of um, baking soda And now we just add that in here. So now we are about to put the batter evenly in each pan. Then we're going to bake it in our convection oven. Now the recipe says 350 for 30 minutes or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. We will adjust for our convection oven. We'll do it about 325 and we'll check it after about 25 minutes or so, but you know how cakes bake in your oven. So typically 350, 30 minutes in a standard conventional oven. Ready? Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, we have put these in nine inch cake pans, but if you can put them in eight inch, then you will have a taller cake, because if you go in in size this way, it's gonna have to go up that way, so you'll have a taller cake. Okay, the cakes have come out of the oven. Um, you can find our of gloves using our Amazon link. So they're awesome, they've worked for us. Our Amazon link is in the description box below, and you can purchase these at no extra cost to you if you're already interested in purchasing them anyway. And we are affiliates, so every little bit helps us of gloves. So what I've done over here is I've already taken, I let them sit here, I don't know, probably two minutes this one probably more, maybe even four or so. And... Right? Not too much sticking. No, no, no sticking. Came out just fine. So we're going to let these cool. We have our cake layers that have cooled overnight, and we have new helpers who feel like this is the favorite, their favorite part of the cake, right? <laughs> um, well, no, the favorite part is to eat. Well, okay. Oh, I mean, so. it's more favorite. That's not a word. Yeah. Uh, so we've got eight ounces of cream cheese, a stick of butter. Um, so that's a half a pound of cream cheese and a fourth a pound of butter. They are very, very soft, and if Mr. Patient will blend these up, I will slowly add the one pound of confectioner sugar. It's also called icing sugar in other countries, and Little Miss Homemaker can add our one teaspoon of homemade vanilla. We have the icing mixed up. It's cream cheese icing. And we're going to frost the cake. Do you call it frosting or icing? Let me know in the comments below. 
What do you call it? Is there a difference? I probably need to research that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, frost the cake and if you would like to see a, a tip or, or how I do that, then check out tomorrow's video. But for now, let me frost that and bring it back to you. All right, guys. I hope you check out tomorrow's video where I show how I frosted the cake without making a mess all over the pan and talk to you just a little bit about garnishing and the final product. Woohoo! So here we go. And what's next? Lighten the candles. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dad. Happy birthday to you. And many s'mores. Many s'mores. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 out of the Bible. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that you may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. <laughs> You could make this ahead of time. If you wanted to make these cakes and have them for Thanksgiving or Christmas, you could go ahead and make these um, even, you know, the end of October. Wrap them up really well in plastic. Even, I would also put them in... <laughs> Open your mouth. What was I saying? You can also wrap up when you live in. I think well, you were going to say even wrap them today, in foil. No, it wasn't. Wrap them it, in you plastic. Know, when you live all over the country, you never know what you're going to get, right? Okay, here we go. Are I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. I okay. got it. Baggy, not foil. You run, run with it. Okay, you can even wrap them in plastic really well, and then I would put them in a two gallon baggie. Um, I would do that when they're cool now. Waiting on the train. 